All right. Let's do one more, uh, one more clip from, uh, from Billions. So this is a clip where Bobby Oxenrod is speaking in front of his son's school. It's a private school. It's a boarding school. And his son uh, built a, I guess, some kind of computer to mine Bitcoin in the basement of the school. Blew out the electric fuses for the entire town around it. And is basically about to be expelled from the school. And with the idea that he broke the codes and he did all this stuff. And Bobby, Bobby comes there and he basically finds dirt on the headmaster and keeps him in the school. And part of the deal is not only does his son get to stay in the school, but Bobby gets to address the student body at the school and give a little speech. So here's Bobby's one, one and a half minute speech to the school. Notice again, the stuff you would cheer together with stuff that is cringeworthy. That combination. Here it goes. The headmaster was kind enough to seat me the mic for this morning's lesson. And I'm here to give you a little bit about what the school has been holding back from you. The goddamn truth about Darwin, scarcity, and the world you actually live in. Notice Darwin. You know, the, the, the Darwin evolution, only the fittest survive, survival of the fittest, zero sum. Scarcity, zero sum. And the world in which you live in, he's going to argue, is zero sum. If it's a zero sum world, where do you want to be? Exploited or be doing the exploiting? But that's the setup. The setup is immediately buying into all the negative, wrong views of life, of the world that are out there. It's not the warm, swaddled place your headmaster and your parents have told you about. Yeah. It's populated by people like me. There he is, the monster. Who will tear you apart. Yeah, tear them apart. Physical violence. Nature didn't select me. I selected myself. Now that's beautiful, right? Nature didn't select me. I select myself. That's free will. That's my ambition. That's my focus. That's my energy, my responsibility, feeding off of the previous clip that I showed you, right? That's great. But he selected himself to do what? By harnessing my nature. My son wasn't pulling a prank. He was trying to earn. And That's if he good. broke the school's code, it's because the code is wrong. Asked him to go against the DNA, which is telling each of you to be greedy. Yes, be hungry. Subjugate and conquer. Subjugate and conquer. Subjugate and conquer. That to him is the essence, right? It's exploit or be exploited. If those are the options in life, what would you rather be? The exploiter. Somebody mentioned um, that this is like Gayle Wanted. Yeah, this is very much like Gayle Wanted. Here's an incredibly able person who has come to the conclusion that the only way he can win is by exploiting others. The only way he can be successful is by exploiting others. Now, he doesn't go all out. He doesn't become a monster. He's not a monster in the show. But he's unhappy because he lives... It is in a world that he has created in his own mind that is a zero-sum world. And I don't think you can enjoy a zero-sum world. Because that's who we are. That's what we are. Capitalism harnesses that better than any other economic model on earth. Now, if you replaced... You replace what he just said with self-interest, then yeah, capitalism does harness self-interest. I'm not sure for what purpose. What do you harness something for? What? But it harnesses. It allows that freedom, which is what creates the wealth. Everything we have, Everything we have is, because of capitalism. is because of capitalism. Absolutely. Because someone had an incentive to get up off his ass, to out-invent, to out-earn, yes, and to subjugate others. Subjugate others. So he just said, everything you have is because of capitalism could be out of my, one of my speeches. 
had an incentive to get up and earn and produce and create all good stuff and to subjugate others. In other words, he's just buying into Marxist theory and he's saying, yeah, and I agree with Marx, but as long as I'm doing the exploiting, it's cool. Less capable, less intelligent, less ambitious, less lucky to make those capitalistic dreams come true. You know what I'm talking about, Headmaster Kessel. The dirty secret you may not want to hear, but you fucking love the result. As will you, soon enough. Go out there and exploit people. So, uh, what can I say? I love Bobby, Bobby Axelrod's sense of life. I love his spirit. I love his ambition. I love his cockiness, his unwillingness to bend, his pride, his confidence, his eloquence. What he needs is a moral guide. What he needs is some rational self-interest. What he needs... What he needs is Ayn Rand. Now, somebody says the writers want you to hate him. They don't really. Not if you watch the show. They don't want you to hate him. They want you to hate him and love him. Just like most people today want you to hate and love capitalism. They want you to hate him and love him. They want you to love his bigger-than-life vivaciousness, which I think most people do. That's why they watch it. And then they want to hate the ideas behind it, but they're not, they're not questioning. They're not undercutting what he says. He says everything we have around us is a product of capitalism. I think they acknowledge that. So this goes back to that dichotomy. We talked about, we've talked about in a number of shows now. You can be good or you can be happy. You can be good or you can be rich. You can be good or you can have a high standard of living. You can't be good and be rich. You can't be good and have a high standard of living. So capitalism produces a high standard of living, but it's bad. Socialism is good. But it sucks because we know it produces poverty. So this dichotomy between happiness and goodness, between success and goodness, this dichotomy is everywhere in our culture. And it is killing us. It is killing us. And again, this is so much. This is, this is Kant right there. This is Immanuel Kant. This is why he is so bad. Because Kant teaches us that you can either be happy all good. Good or successful. Can't be both. And you'll see, my guess is, that Mike Prince's attempt to be good and successful will fail in the end. What we'll see is he's not really good. It's just a facade. That he cannot, nobody can be good and successful. At the end of the day, if you're going to be good, you're going to be poor. If you're going to be good, you're going to fail. And that's, that's the message. And indeed, the same thing is true of the district attorney, who is vicious. He's not portrayed as a good guy in the, in the story. He's a bad guy and unhappy. Right? So he is trying to do good. Right? He's trying to do good. But he can't because he's undermined by his own emotions, by his own hatred, by his own you know, ideas. So there is no good character fully in the movie, but if you compare the district attorney and who's trying to get Axelrod and Bobby Axelrod, clearly Bobby Axelrod is the more likable character, even if you know he's not going to be happy. He's not a good guy. He's likable.
what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...